What is going on guys, welcome to a new video. So today then I've got a brand new Facebook ads scaling strategy to go through with you guys. Um, I'm pretty excited about this one to be honest. Um, it's one I've developed myself, I've not seen anybody else talk about it. So I think you guys are gonna enjoy it. But before we get into the video then, I just wanna take a quick second just to say a massive thank you to everybody who has been supporting the channel recently. We're due to hit 3,000 subscribers in the next kind of three or four days, which is just absolutely crazy. And it's all thanks to you guys. So thank you very much, I really do appreciate it. And please do keep it coming. So that being said then guys, that's the topic. Thank you for tuning in and let's get straight into the video. So here we are then guys inside my ad account manager. Um, there was just a couple of things I wanted to show you really. Number one is the fact that this works and typically when I go into a new niche then this is the scaling strategy I always use to begin with and then once I've scaled it that will allow me to use certain other methods for example targeting broader audiences but to begin with then when you first scale you have to build it up slowly and I'll get into more of that later on in the video. The second thing I wanted to show you then was the frequency score. As you can see, it's quite high. Um, this was actually one thing that I disagree on when speaking to Facebook. So when you spend X amount, then sometimes you'll get assigned a Facebook, um, I, don't, I can't remember what they call them now, um, but like somebody will call you up basically and want to advise you on how you're spending your money. And they say that you wanna try and keep that frequency score as close to one as possible, which is something I actually disagree with. I don't agree with everything they say. And for a couple of reasons really, um, Number one, people don't always buy on the first time they see your ad. Um, there's a there's a rule in like the digital marketing kind of industry and it's called the seven rule. So what it basically means is that somebody has to see your product or your brand on an average of about seven times before they buy. Um, so here's an example. This is just one website talking about the rule. Um, but if I could just, just show you, there's loads and loads of other websites talking about this rule. So in marketing, it's said that a customer has to see an ad seven times to remember it. And obviously the more they remember it, the better chance they have of coming back to you and buying your product. So in terms of trying to keep your frequency low, then don't worry about it, but there's a reason then why this frequency is so high, and it's because we start with a small audience. So what I'm gonna do then is just build out an ad set as if I was scaling it, so you guys can get to see then exactly how this strategy works, and then as I go through it, I'll just explain along the way why it works as well. In fact, just one quick thing then before we actually build the ad set, I just wanna refresh the page so you guys can see that these results are legit. Uh, for whatever reason now, people don't believe people unless they refresh your page, so I just wanted to do that to make it clear that there's no, I mean, I don't even know how you would go about editing results, but there you go. So I'm just going to go ahead, click create campaign. Um, I think I got halfway through my note. So we'll start from the very beginning. I'm going to go ahead and choose conversions. Obviously, make sure you can choose the name of your product to put in the campaign name so you know exactly what product you're advertising for that campaign. And then I'm just gonna run through the whole thing from top to bottom. So typically then, I always ignore the ad set name to begin with because I don't know yet at this point what my targeting options are gonna be. So what I tend to do is go through the whole ad set, then go back and then rename it to something that actually makes sense. So pixel wise then I've got multiple pixels, hence the weird name. Conversion event, I've got custom conversions depending on what niche I'm in. Uh, so since we've got the dog purchase conversion up, then I'll base this example then on if we were going into the dog niche. So audience wise then, there's no custom audiences. Location, make sure you stick to one country per ad set until you know which countries essentially respond best to your product. Then you can start to combine the best ones all into one ad set. But to begin with then, I like to keep it separate. And I always choose everybody who lives in this location. That way, I've had it before actually, people on holiday in the UK, but then they live in America or they live in Spain and they've always put their home address in. So it would be a Spanish address or a US address and it can just be confusing sometimes. So I typically like to just make sure that it's people who live in the country that you're actually targeting. Moving on then to age and gender. Now, if you're going into a new niche, then you might not know who the best age range is or what your ideal gender is. So you can leave those as blank because the interests we're going to be targeting are small, then Leaving them as a default is no problem at all. Language, I always leave that blank. I very rarely put an actual language in there. And then detail targeting. So this is where essentially this whole Facebook scaling strategy is gonna be based on. So I like to call it 
I haven't really got a name for it to be honest. It's but basically what we're going to be doing is just adding more and more interests as we see more and more purchases. So to begin with, we want to make sure this is unticked. That way we're only going to be targeting people within the interest that we actually select. So what I would typically do then is I would have one ad set for one particular category of interests, another ad set for another particular category, and so on. So one particular category, I like to make sure the categories are based around people who are already spending money within that niche so we're in the dog niche then we've got to think about who are the people who own dogs and already spend in essentially what are they spending their money on within the dog niche so it could be certain dog foods that could be one ad set it could be magazines that could be another ad set it could be pages related to say activities that dog owners do so it could be interests around dog training or dog walking um, i know for a fact that a good interest that i use all the time is countryside dog walks I know it's pretty small as well, probably about 40,000 people, there we go. I'm just going to go down and change the budget as well. Typically, I'll always start on 10, uh, 10 pounds per day. And the reason for that being then is if you're watching this video, then you've probably heard of the $5 ad set strategy. Um, it's a very common one that a lot of people use. So if everybody's spending $5 and we're spending double what they're spending, then Facebook is a bidding system. So if we've got double the budget, then essentially we should get more favorable results. So anyway, back to the targeting. So as you can see then, Countryside Dog Walks is a very small interest. We've got a potential reach of 41,000 people, which is absolutely no problems with that at all to begin with. Like I said, if you're going into a new niche, then you're gonna have zero pixel data, which means Facebook isn't gonna have a clue who your ideal customer is. So essentially we have to do the targeting first. And because it's an interest then that's related to activities that only dog owners will be interested in, then we've got a good chance of targeting only people who actually own dogs and therefore they'll be more likely to buy our product. Because it's such a small audience, you can see that it's gonna be a select few amount of people and therefore we've got a good chance of having a higher hit rate um, and, all, and, and essentially a higher conversion rate, which is always gonna be a good thing. Now, 41,000 people, if you think about how many of those will convert, there's not a lot of room in there to make a lot of money. But it, what you have to do is you kind of have to match up this potential reach against how much data or how matured your pixel is. So essentially what I mean by that then is that the newer your pixel is, the smaller the audience size you have to start with. So what I would do then is I would test this audience for 10 pound per day. And if I start to see purchases coming through, once my frequency score say starts to creep up, so starts to hit two, maybe even three, I would come back into this very same ad set and I would add an additional interest into this and that's going to obviously increase our potential reach and we can we can go a bit bigger because there's already data going through this ad set Facebook is now starting to learn who our ideal customers are and therefore even if we've got a bigger audience it'll be able to pick out those people better than it would have done at the beginning so for example then if I just add another interest here to bring up that potential reach so at this point then we've got a few purchases coming through we know the interest is good to scale up then what we want to do is increase this potential reach by adding more interests into here so there's a couple of things you can do then if you're not sure about what interest to add if you simply click on suggestions Facebook is going to give you some good ones um, typically I find the ones that Facebook give you are quite large so in this case they wouldn't really work so for example then if we choose dog walking that's going to bump us straight up to 3.9 million people which is just going too big too quickly so what I like to do then is if I just copy and paste this head over to audience insights and if you've never seen this tool before then get to know it it's a really handy tool to use so make sure you're choosing the same country you're targeting in your ad set um, and then just stick your interest in here hit enter and it's going to give you loads of information for example the demographics etc but if you just click on page likes then it's going to give you all these different top categories and page likes and what this means then is that the people within this audience, these are typically the most popular categories and pages that people within this audience like. So they're similar, so they're great interests to add to ours to build on what we've already got. So what I like to do then is always look at the affinity score because the higher the affinity score is, then the more relevant it is to this initial interest. So obviously number one is gonna be the same interest because it's exactly the same. So what I'm gonna do is just take this number two dog friendly go back to our ads manager and we'll put it in here 
and sizes quarter of a million people so if we hit enter then that should inc oh, if we hit enter it should increase our potential reach quite nicely so it's 95,000 people so it's doubled the amount of people so it's still quite a significant increase but that I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with that I'll be happy with that so at this point now we've got another 40 plus thousand people that we can go out and target and like I said because our pixel is starting to mature now then it will be better at finding those people who are going to purchase in this small it's a bigger audience but it's still quite a smaller audience and essentially what we do then is every time we see sales building and building and building then we keep increasing this potential reach because what I'm trying to say then is that if we started off with an audience that was 95,000 people with a completely fresh pixel, then Facebook hasn't got as good a chance as finding the purchases within 95,000 people as it has 41,000 people because 41,000 people is a smaller audience, if that makes sense. Without any previous data, it's not going to know who our ideal customers are. So you need to be as specific as possible. And then once the purchases start to come through, then we we can start to increase this potential reach. So hopefully that's starting to make sense and hopefully I've explained it well enough. Um, if I haven't, I do apologize. Please feel free to just spam me with as many questions as you want. Leave them down below in the comment section and I do get back to every single person. So just to finish off the ad set then for the video, um, placement wise, I always stick just to the main ones. So Facebook newsfeed. Um, sometimes I combine Instagram with Facebook, but if it's a new niche, then I'll separate them out just so I can control how much budget I'm spending on each one. And therefore I can test each one evenly, if that makes sense. If I combine them in the one into one, then obviously Facebook is, it's gonna give the majority of the budget to the one which is performing best, or which one is performing best in Facebook's eyes. So you don't necessarily get an even test. So I typically then leave all of those blank and we'll just test one place at a time. Moving down all mobile devices, um, budget then, I always stick to £10 daily budget per ad set when starting off in a new niche. Conversions, we want seven day clicks and we're going to go for the lowest cost as well. So that being said then, in fact, one more thing then just to finish off, we're going to go back to the top and we're tagged in the UK. We're going for 18 plus, go for male and female and our first audience then was 41k so what that does then is every time i create an ad set i know exactly who we're tagged in the size of the audience and therefore when i'm looking over things so i know for a fact then that this ad set is 41,000 people so once i start to see some purchases come through maybe three or four then that tells me it's ready to increase the potential audience size to up to something bigger and then once i do i always simply just edit the name to what the total audience size is and then therefore i can kind of gauge like how many purchases work against the potential audience reach. So for example, then when you've tried this strategy a few times, you'll be flicking through your ad sets and you'll see, say an audience size that's 50,000 people and you've had 10 purchases. And when your knowledge starts to increase, you will marry those two numbers together and you think, right, 50,000 audience size, 10 purchases, that's now ready to take to that next level and scale up. And then it might be say 200,000 people and you've had say 100 purchases and you say, right, that's now ready to scale up if that makes sense. So I'm gonna wrap it up there because I think I've pretty much covered everything. Hopefully I've made myself clear. Um, if you're still watching the video, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please do leave a like on the video. Let me know in the comment section what you want me to cover next. Any particular topic any questions whatever it is um, and again thank you very much for supporting the channel we're going to be hitting 3,000 subscribers very very soon um, and i'm going to be doing some sort of giveaway in every single video from there on so if you want to be part of that make sure you subscribe um, and i'll see you all in the next one